The Quran was revealed by Allah as a divine guidance for all mankind, not only for the Arab or the Muslim. So it is very wrong if the Pakistani Muslim, the Somalian Muslim, the Indian Muslim, the Arab Muslim say, Quran is only for us. You are not yet Muslim, don't touch the Quran. You are not clean. No, no, no. Don't read the Quran. We are Mr. Clean. No. Who said the Quran is for you? Quran is for everybody. Allah said, Hudalin Nas. Now, the message of Islam is very clear. Because Islam is for all. Number one, Allah said, O Muhammad, wa ma illa rahmatan lil alamin. O Muhammad, we do not send you except to bring mercy to the world, to the universe. وافتكر في الكون وانظر وسعه وتبصر يا اخي هذا الفلا سترى now let's start with Sheikh Husseini who's going to deliver his lecture Islam in a modern society conflict or harmony Sheikh Husseini could you please come to the stage inshallah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل لنا ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد الأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال الله أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the ni'mah that Allah has given us as His creation, the last creation of Allah. As insan, whether you are Muslim or not yet Muslim, there's only one God who created all of us and He is Allah. May the blessing and the mercy of Allah be upon all His messengers and prophets from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Isaac to Ismail to Moses to Jesus and to the last messenger of Allah to men, all mankind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and we keep on asking Allah to guide us even we are guided now without fail every day the Muslim ask Allah ihdina sirat al Mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide us all to the straight path. Even we are in the straight path, but we still keep on asking Allah to guide us. Not only guide you or guide me, but guide us all. Ehdina siratul mustaqim. To remind the Muslim that it is our duty to pray for everybody. Even you are praying alone, brothers and sisters. 
But Islam is here not for you only, but for everyone. And that's why we said we don't say eh dini ila siratul mustaqim. Even you are praying alone, if you recite eh dini, will you think your prayer will be accepted, brothers? No, it's wrong. How can you change the word of Allah? Even you are praying alone, but Allah wants you to say eh dina siratul mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide us all to the straight path. Fellow brothers and sisters, we are here because Allah wants us to be here. We are here because Allah said so. Islam net can organize. We can come all the way from Malaysia, from UK, from other parts of the country. But if Allah said you will not be here, you won't be here today. But because Allah said you will be here. And that's why we are all here today, alhamdulillah. Now the message of Islam is very clear. Because Islam is for all. Number one, Allah said, O Muhammad, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmata lil alamin. O Muhammad, we do not send you except to bring mercy to the world, to the universe. Now the teaching of Islam is not here to teach you just how to pray to Allah, how to worship Allah. No, it's more than that. We are talking about Islam in the modern society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he revealed this Quran, Allah said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن حدا للناس وبينة من الحدا والفرقان. In the blessed month of Ramadan, we reveal the Quran. As a what, brothers? The Quran was revealed by Allah as a what? As a what? حدا حدا فهو حدا فهو Huda linnas. The Quran was revealed by Allah as a divine guidance for all mankind, not only for the Arab or the Muslim. So it is very wrong if the Pakistani Muslim, the Somalian Muslim, the Indian Muslim, the Arab Muslim say Quran is only for us. You are not yet Muslim. Don't touch the Quran. You are not clean. No, no, no. Don't read the Quran. We are Mr. Clean. No, who said that Quran is for you? Quran is for everybody. Allah said, "Hudalil nas, leisa hudalil Arab, leisa hudalil Muslim, fakat, ma hudalil nas, wa bayinat min al huda wal furqat." And Quran is here to explain everything to us: what to do, what not to do, how to behave yourself, how to be a good citizen. How to be a successful man? How to be a successful businessman? How to be a successful husband? How to be a successful father? How to be a successful leader? This is what Quran is about. Not just a book to teach us how to make salat, how to fast in the month of Ramadan, how to perform Hajj. That is part of the Quran. But majority of the verses in the Quran is here to guide all of us to live like a human, to act like a human, to behave like a human, to think like a human. Because sometimes there are human who act like a shaitan. There are human who act like God. He decides everything. What he say is right. It must be right, even it's wrong. Like the husband always said to their wife, "The boss is always right. I am the boss." <laughs> Do you agree with this? No. Nobody can say I am Mr. Right. We are all human, and the Prophet said, "Yeah, every human commits sin." Yeah. The Prophet said, "Kullu ibn Adam qatta ma khair qatta in tawabu." Every children of Adam, they commit sins. 
And the best among the sinners are those who repent, who change. So nobody said, I'm Mr. Clean, I'm an angel, I have no sin now. No, nobody can say that. Except prophet, they are maksum. They are guided by Allah. They don't follow their desire, we follow our desire. Now, the first thing I'd like to share with all the brother and sister about how Islam successfully have developed yeah, a civilized nation to bring this world to a better yeah, to a better world, to become all of us, even you are different in race and tribe, but we can live together like one big family. Allah said, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the ni'mah, the blessing of Allah that He has given us. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً Once upon a time, you live like enemy, you hate each other, you fight with each other, because of race, because you are from different tribes. You fight against each other because of your color, because of your names. I am Qurayshi, I am that, I am that kind of tribe, you are this tribe, no? I am the Qawarish, yeah? I am the Qattafan, fight with each other. Just for a small matter, you become enemy, you go against each other. But I, Allah, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ I united all your heart with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And Allah said again, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ زَقْرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ مِنْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَقْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَدْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلِيمٌ قَبِيرٌ O oh, mankind, again, brothers and sisters, you see what Allah is telling us. In this Quran, Allah normally said, Ya ayyuhannas, Ya ayyuhannas, O oh, mankind, O oh, people, not O oh, Arabs, no O oh, Muslim, O oh, mankind. To show us that this book is for everybody and Allah is the God for every one of us. The only that different that we are facing today there are people who know who is Allah he accept him and become a believer there are people who do not know who is Allah they reject him not said they reject him with knowledge they reject Allah out of ignorance and this is the duty of us as Muslim to bring back Allah to all of them to tell them Allah is for you and for me this is very important and Allah said, O oh mankind, indeed we are the one who created all of you from one male and one female, from Adam and Eve. From one father and one mother. And it was confirmed by the khutbah of our Prophet ﷺ in the khutbah to Rida. He was addressing all the Muslims. He didn't say, Ayyuhal Arab, Ayyuhal Hujjaz, he still said Ayyuhal Nas in Arafah to remind his followers, his Ummah, that this religion, Islam, is for everybody. Ayyuhal Nas. Inna Rabbakum Wahid. Your God is only one. Wa inna Abakum Wahid. And all of you came from one father. Kullukum in Adam wa Adam in Turan. And all of us are from Adam and Adam is from the earth. Layis al Fatlun al Arabian al Arabian al al Ajamin illa bi taqwa. The Arab is not superior than the non Arab except taqwa. Neither the white upon the black except taqwa. Do you agree with this message, brother? As a Muslim, do you agree with this message? This is not my word. This is a word of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Allah has said that it is He, Allah, who decided to make us into tribes and nations. Shu'uba, nation and tribes. That's why you have different color in this hall. 
your brother Hossein Yi is also different from you. You know? Do you think you will call me to talk about Islam to you if my name is Yi Ron Yen? Uh, no, no, no. What is this guy? What, what is Islamnet doing? Calling a Buddhist guy and talk to us about our Islam? It's crazy. It was before I became a Muslim, I was a Buddhist. So my name is Yi Ron Yen. Then I made a first hijrah to Christianity. So I have a Christian name. Do you think they will invite me if I am Johnny Yi? That's my name. My Christian name, Johnny Yi. I don't think you like to listen about Islam from Mr. Johnny Yi. Maybe the Christian group will call me, not the Muslim. Alhamdulillah, I got the hidayah from Allah and I become Hussein Yi. Alhamdulillah. And that's why I'm here in front of you. It's not because of Yi, it's because of Hussein. <laughs> Make me a brother to all of you. I am no more a stranger. When I become a Muslim, every Muslim in the world is my family. Alhamdulillah. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانَ With the ni'mah of Islam, we become a big family. And there is a teaching of Islam. Treat every one of us like a big family. Even if we are different in color, different in race and tribe, but we all have the same belief, worship one God, follow one messenger, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and we have one deen, one way of life. What is modern? What is civilization? You know, civilization is just the opposite of Jahiliya. Before civilization, everybody just think of themselves. And you see the beauty of this deen. When you come to dunya, when you come to ibadah, mahda, ibadah mahda, like prayer, fasting, zikr, umrah, hajj, this is ibadah mahda. Ibadah mahda, no one can modify it. Nobody can change the form of this ibadah because it's fixed by Allah. Allah said, Today I have perfected this deen for all of you. Nobody can interfere, make some changes in the context of ibadah mahda. No more. It's fixed by Allah. Performing zohar, forka. Wherever you go, it's forka. You go to India, you go to China, you go to Africa. How many raka is zohar prayer, brother? Oh, can you say, no, I think, uh, I, I, I increase one more rakat, five. <laughs> because I want to be closer to God. You know? So I make five rakat zohor. Do you think people will follow you? No. Even your intention is good. You have good intention, you want to plus one more extra rakat. But this ibadah is fixed. Nobody has the right to interfere. When you interfere, it's no more ibadah. Al-Mahdah. But when you come to dunya, Muamalat, Munakahat, Jinayat. This is to show you how Islam yeah, make this world so civilized. Islam is here to guide us, to teach us how to live together with fellow mankind. Muamalat is your responsibility towards the community, the society that you're living in. And of course, they are Muslim, they are not yet Muslim. They are good and bad and ugly, everywhere you go. You never find all angels, Mr. Right now. There must be some right and some wrong. There is life, there is reality. Islam is here to teach you the truth of this life. Nothing. That Islam never covered in Islam. And Islam here is to teach you to be careful about your rights and other people's rights. Talking about food. We want to, we live in this world, we need to eat to survive. Do we eat, brothers? Have you had your lunch already? Yes? I didn't have my lunch yet. Yeah. But anyhow, we, are going to, we have to eat. 
We everybody need to eat, and you see what Allah said: Ya ayuhan nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. Oh human, eat, eat. He now said, Oh you who believe, don't eat. Oh you don't know, oh, oh you don't who, who do not believe, you eat. No, you see, all mankind eat. Eat what is halal and good, because we want to stay. To keep ourselves healthy and strong, we do not want to eat something that destroy ourselves. True or not, brother? You are not supposed to eat anything that will bring harm to you. Anything that will cause harm to you is haram. That's why Allah call everybody eat what is good and what is halal. This is life. Not only for the Muslim, you eat halal food. No, Allah said, Ya ayuhan nas. كل مما في الأرض حلالا طيبا. Oh mankind, eat what is halal that Allah has provided for all of us. Because we need to keep ourselves healthy. And when come to dunya, you see what the Prophet said. Allah Akbar. People may say, is it a sunnah to use all this heavy machinery? Yeah, to yeah. For farming, example, is it a sunnah? The time of the prophet, you don't have all this machine. Do you have all this bulldozer and all other kind of machine to harvest the field? Do you have that before? What do you use before? What do we use to harvest our field? What do we use? Cow, buffalo, yeah, all animals. But now, do you still use cow and buffalo? No. You're using what? What are we using today? Tractors. But you see the beauty of this religion. The Prophet said, Antum a'lamu bi umri dunya. When it comes to dunya, I don't interfere. You know about your dunya more than me. This is what the Prophet said. To show us that Islam is not against any civilization. Islam is not a religion that will bring you back yeah, to the desert life. No. Islam is not here saying, everybody who wants to go to Hajj, the first thing that you must learn to ride camel. <laughs> oh, then you have problem. <laughs> then before Hajj, anybody who registered for Hajj, the first thing you must learn about Hash is not the, 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 the shurud of hash, the condition, the do and don't, but how to ride a camel. But no, you just can come to Makkah. Yeah, from which kind of transportation you wish, it's up to you. Whether to the air, you submarine, it's up to you. As long as you reach Makkah. Alhamdulillah. We don't have submarine yet yeah, to go to Makkah yet. Yeah. Uh, we have Jeddah port. Eh? Yeah, man, you use air. By land, train maybe, inshallah. Dunya, the Prophet do not want to interfere. Antum a'lami bi umri dunyakum. Only the Prophet remind us with the guidance of the Quran that was given by Allah. In dunya, you must be amana. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't get involved yeah, in any business that is haram. You want to do business? Do. Make sure your business is clear cut. What is halal is halal. What is haram is haram. It's a guidance. You want to marry? Marry. But a man only can marry with? With what? With who? A woman. <laughs> of course, you know, you only get married with a woman. <laughs> but how about I don't love women? I love men. <laughs> what can you do? Islam is a very civilized religion. If you consider yourself a modern guy, a civilized person, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right. We entertain. This thing happened in the time of Prophet Lut. Yeah. What happened to them? 
Did Allah accept them? Did Allah say, no problem? Okay. No. Allah say, I make, I created zakar wa untha, not kunza. Kunza Allah never created. But you see what happened to the society, so-called modern society, civilized country. They are accepting all this. They are changing the law of God. They are playing God. And see what is happening to the, to the world today. We suffer. It's because we go against God's rule. Because we make haram halal. We are not going to be more civilized. We are going backward. We become like the people of Lut. This is not modern. We are going back to the Jahiliyyah. It's just like before Islam, the woman, how do they dress, sisters? Do you know how they dress? The woman is, is just like a, a, you know, it's an object for the man. The man have no respect to the woman. That's why they have no rights. If a woman is divorced by the man, no man will get married with that woman anymore. It's better for her to die. Because she's a useless woman. That's why the man leave her. If the woman become a widow because the, the husband passed away, all the people will curse the woman and say, it's because of you, your husband died first. So both ways you are gone. Both ways you are condemned. The man always blame you. You are the cause of the disaster. This is what before Islam. The Jahiliya system is like that. Woman is an object to be used by the man. After they use you, they don't need you, they just chuck you aside. They go for another thing. This is what happened. Do you think you have right? You have no right, sisters, before Islam. In the time, the time of Jahiliya, women have no right. It's better for them to die. But Islam, a civilized religion, yeah, came and saved all of us and put the woman yeah, in a level that they never even dream about. To the level that the man also got to respect and honor them. Protect them. To the extent that Allah said, Hunna libasu lakum wa antum libasu lakumna. The woman and man relationship now, what Islam have brought to us is that you are like a garment to each other. Why do Allah use garment? Why do Allah use this term libas? Why do we, Allah use this? Because libas is, the, is something that is close to your body. The thing that is closest to your body is what? Is what, brothers? Is your clothes, your libas. What do libas do to us? What do libas do to you, sister? To cover your body, to protect you from heat, from cold, from any defect. There is the function of a libas to cover yourself up, to protect you. And there is a function of man and woman in Islam. Not to expose your weaknesses, your defect to the public, yeah, but here to protect you. This is how civilized, how modern Islam is. Come and teach you to be like a human, act like a human, eat like a human, yeah, live like a human, talk like a human, behave like a human. And the Prophet said, I was sent to bring all of you to have a good conduct, to have good akhlaq. Because the best thing in this world is good akhlaq. And good akhlaq have the heaviest skill mizan in akhirah. And what I'd like to share with all the brothers and sisters today, please remember, do Islam bring any conflict to this modern world? No. Islam is here to unite every one of us. 
Islam is here to spread the word of peace to everybody. Whether you are Muslim or not yet Muslim, you must spread peace to each other. And that's why you see only Muslim use this word. When they meet fellow Muslim, Assalamu Alaikum. Do we agree with that, brother? There's the best greeting. Peace be upon you. We are not here to create any hatred. We are not here to create any war with anybody, but we are here to bring peace. But now, a lot of people say that the Muslim are, the Muslim are what? The Muslim are terrorists. Now, brothers, please be honest with me and the sisters. How many not yet Muslim who are in this hall today? Can you raise up your hand? People who are not yet Muslim, please. One, not yet Muslim. Two, three, four, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How do you feel sitting among the terrorists? <laughs> you feel safe? You feel safe? We all know we are no terrorists. But the media is telling us that Muslims are terrorists. You know why they always attack the Muslims? Do you know why, brothers and sisters? I was thinking all the time when people attack Muslims, why am I a terrorist? I look at myself in the mirror, am I a terrorist? Do I look like a terrorist? <laughs> Did I terrorize anybody I go? And then wherever I go, did I terrorize anybody? Or because my beard become a terrorist? I was trying to understand. Are we terrorists? No. I always spend time with my family who are not yet Muslim. And they love my present. They always love my present with them. Anytime they know that I'm coming back to my family, my sisters, my brother. Oh, they are very happy. You know how happy they are? I will tell you how happy they are. One day know that I'm coming, they change everything. One day know that I'm coming back, I'm going to visit them, I'm going to come back to be with the family in the gathering, family reunion, they make sure that all food is halal. That's how happy they are. No. They are not going to make haram food anymore. No more haram thing. Everything halal. If I say, I'm coming, they make sure that they will prepare halal food or they will bring me to a halal restaurant. Because they love my present. It's not that if I say, I'm coming back, ah, it's a problem today. We cannot eat haram thing anymore. No, they love to change the environment. But do you know why the people always blame Muslim are terrorists? Because this is the only nation the only people on earth today who promote peace. Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum. And do you know who is the terrorist? Who is the real terrorist? Do you know, sister? At the end of the talk, inshallah, Q&A will give you the answer. <laughs> now, what I'm going to share with you is to understand this beautiful deen, deen of Islam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us this beautiful deen, al yawma akmaltu lakum deen akum. I myself, Allah said, perfected this deen for you. What is the deen, brother and sister? What is the difference of religion and deen? Do you know the difference? وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَاتِ And I have completed my favor to all of you. وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ And I choose Islam as a deen for all of you. What is the difference between religion and deen? Do you understand that question, brother? Normally when you say Islam, that means you have the freedom to pray, to fast in Ramadan, to go to Mecca to perform Hajj, 
You have the freedom to choose to be a Muslim or not a Muslim. That is what Islam always people understand Islam. Islam is ritual, ritual. But Deen is a complete way of life. And this is something that majority of the people do not give the freedom of Deen to the Muslim. They give you the freedom of Islam, but not the freedom of Deen. When your freedom of Deen means you have the right to dress like a Muslim. You have the right to do the Islamic business. That means you have the right not to get involved in riba. You have the right to come up with Islamic banking, Islamic insurance. You have all the right, Islamic education. There is deen. That means people must give you the right to exercise your religion as a way of life. To behave like a Muslim, dress like a Muslim, eat what Islam allowed you to eat and do halal business and educate your children in the Islamic way of tarbiyah that is the deen in Islam and marry in the Islamic way divorce in the Islamic way and if somebody died the inheritance the fara'id must be in Islamic way you understand that brother? there is the deen because deen is not just praying, fasting, no. Because Islam is the complete way of life. You don't have to look to the east or the west. You just look into the Quran. And the Quran is in the house of every Muslim. Allah Akbar. The Quran is in the house of every Muslim. When you open the Quran, Allah Akbar, I share with you one simple guidance, brothers and sisters. When you open the Quran, the first chapter is Surah. What Surah is that? What Surah? Surah Al-Fatiha. What is the meaning of Fatiha? The opening chapter. That's why when you read the Quran, you must open your mind. You must read the Quran with an open heart, an open eye, open ear. Because Quran wants you to think, not just to read. But you must think what Allah says in the Quran. Not just to get the blessing of the recitation of the Quran. We know every word, every letter you have reward. Allah gives you reward. Yeah? Because Allah said, Every good thing that you do, you got 10 reward from Allah. But the Quran is not a book just for you to read but for you to open your mind you have to understand but we have been reading without understanding for years and generations do you agree with me brother we all have been reading the quran from young and we have cut down the quran completed the recitation after that we don't open the quran anymore unless somebody die when someone died you open the quran again like the quran is not for the living for the dead no. and the only surah that you recite normally the traditional Muslim when he open the Quran what surah do they recite? what surah brothers? what surah? Yasin it's like the Quran have no other surah except Yasin what has happened to this Ummah? Uh, this is called traditional Muslim who don't understand what is the Quran the Quran is for you to reflect. And the opening after the chapter, what did Allah say? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. To tell us, the first thing that you must remember, the first thing that you must think when you open your eye, if you're asleep last night, when you open your eye, what do you say? What do you say, brother? Alhamdulillah. What do you say, sister? At least, Alhamdulillah. Of course, the du'a the Prophet have taught us, Alhamdulillah illazi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. All praise due to Allah. Why? He is the one who gives me life after my death. And to Allah, all of us will return.
The first ayah of the Quran and Surah Al Fatiha is Alhamdulillah. Remind us to be thankful to Allah. We must be thankful to Allah, shukur to Allah. Who is Allah? Rabbul Alamin. Allah is not Rabbul Arab. No. Rabbul Muslimin. No. Rabbul Alamin. Allah is the creator, the sustainer of the worlds. Of the Alamin. And who is Allah? Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim. Allah is the Lord of the worlds and he have a Rahman, a Rahmi, <coughs> the most merciful, the most beneficial. He is here to forgive all our sins. If we have committed all the sin in our life, like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ آمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيَّآتِهِمْ حَسَنًا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمًا Whoever repent to Allah after he commit all the sins that uh, that human have committed on this planet. Not from small to the biggest sin. But if you make tawbah, Allah said, and re renew your iman renew your faith and you engage yourself in all the righteous deeds all the bad deeds that you have done for 40 years 50 years Allah is going to transfer it into good deeds not only he forgive you brother or sister he will transfer your bad deeds into good deeds Allah to show us who are Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So we, may, we cannot give up hope because Allah is always merciful, loving, and He always accepts the repentance of His people or His servant. Now this is a show us Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin. Who is Allah? He is the Malik, the owner. Owner of what? Maliki Yaw, Middin. Remember there will come a day, a day there is no night. There is called Yawm al -Qiyama. And we know what is Yawm al brother? What is Yawm al Why do Allah call this Yawm, Yawm al -Qiyama? Do you understand this, sister? Why did Allah call this day the day of Qiyamah? Why? Why, brother? Oh, Allah. Do you want to know what is Qiyamah, brothers? Yeah? Do you want to know what is Qiyamah, sisters? Can we all stand up for a while? Just a second. Just stand up. Please stand up. Alhamdulillah. Please stand up for the sake of Allah. Now this is Qiyamah. In the day of judgment, all of us will be standing up. None of us will be given a chair. There's no chair. From the Prophet, from Adam to the last human who live on this planet, all will stand up. And do you know how long you're going to stand? How long have you trained to stand up like this? One hour? Ten hours? None of us have trained ourselves to stand more than 10 hours. Even the army, the soldier, they stand maybe 8 hours, then they change shift. But do you know how long we are going to stand like this, brother and sister? 50,000 years. Come see in the sun. 50,000 years we are going to stand up like this. 50,000 years, according to our calculation, is just yom in our one day. Zakallah, you can sit now, right? <coughs> Alhamdulillah, now you understand why Allah used the word Qiyamah. Everybody will stand up. Whether you are a king, whether you are a slave, all of us have to stand up, become the servant of Allah. He, Allah said, Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the owner of that day. Everybody will to see him. Whether you are prepared or not, you have to see him. 
because we came from Allah and to Allah we return. This is Surah Al-Fatiha. And then, Iyaka la'abudwa, Iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, only to you. Only to you. Sister, remember this word. Only to you. How do you feel if your husband said, you are my only wife? You understand that message? If your husband said, you are my only wife, you understand that message very clear? There's no number two anymore. <laughs> How secure you feel? Do you feel secure if your husband said, you are my only wife? Only me. <laughs> well, of course, when you say, you're only, that means no sharing anymore. So Allah said, remember, you only worship Allah. To you, we worship. Not only I worship, even you are worshiping Allah alone, you never said, Iyaka asta'in. Wa iyaka, iyaka a'budu wa iyaka asta'in. Do you say that? But you are praying alone, why must you represent other people? You are praying Allah to Allah alone. So you say, Iya iyaka a'budu wa iyaka asta'in. If you become my imam, do you think people will say amin? <laughs> do you think the ma'mu will say amin? No. The ma'mu will correct you on the spot. Iya ka na'budu. And then you say, Iya ka as-ka'budu again. No, people are not going to pray behind you anymore. Because you are very selfish, you don't think of others. To you, only we worship. And only to you, Allah, we ask for help. Anything to do with the spiritual thing, you only ask Allah directly. Don't go through anyone. Don't go through any medium. This is what Islam have changed the world. To free every one of us from a slave of human, a slave of thing to the slave of Allah. Before we are slave to human, when you want to ask God, you got to go to another human. Why? Why must you go to another human? When you want to ask God, you got to go to an image, a stone, a tree. Why must you do that? You are better than the stone. You are better than the trees. But when you ask God for something, you still go back to all these things. This is not civilization. This is jahiliya. And Islam is here to free you, become a free man. And worship Allah. And ask Allah. If you need something, ask Allah directly. Don't go to the maqbara. Don't go to the grave. They need your help. They can't help you. You understand that, brother? Now, I just give you some example. There are a lot of Muslims go to the grave today. And ask, Oh, Sheikh. Oh, Wali. Na'uzubillah. Now, if this doctor, a close friend of you, he says, He's a heart specialist. Anything to the heart, you go to him. He'll give you the right medication. Now, when he died, do you still go and ask him for help? <laughs> when you have problem, you go to his grave. Oh, doctor. You remember me? I was your patient before. Please. No, I still feel pain in my heart. Can you give me some uh, advice? Do you think he can help you, brother? But he know you, you were his patient. He was his patient for years. Do you think he can help you? He can't help you anymore. Do you think that they can help you? No, only Allah, Hayyun Qayyum will help you. So you ask Allah for help. And you know what we ask for Allah, brother and sister? We don't ask for money. Every Muslim in the world, when they ask Allah, the first thing they ask is, Ehdinas Sirat al this is more better than anything else. The right way is better than dollars and sand. This is the thing that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fellow brothers and sisters, and in Al-Baqarah after Fatiha, Allah explained to us about this book of Allah. And later on, Allah talked about three groups of people. The mu'min, the kafir, and the munafiq. Do you agree with me what is stated in the Quran? 
after zalik al kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin then allah talk about the believers allah is telling us living in this world brother and sister you will have three kind of people one the believers one the non believers and one the hypocrite one 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 group is the believer these people you can trust them this is your companion this is your true friend dunya until akhirah and you have taken group who disbelieve so you know who are the disbeliever lakum dinukum waliyate then the third group is the munafiqin and this group is the most dangerous group this is the group which allah and the prophet describe as zuru wajhain the the people who have two faces they come to you yes i'm like you behind you they say no 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 i'm like you <laughs> you know we have a lot of people like this today now if you know who is a munafiq who is a disbeliever and who is a believer do you think you will have a very safe environment do you know who is your friend who is your enemy can you differentiate that can you differentiate that brother yes you can differentiate you can differentiate if allah said this is the sign of the munafik if anybody have that sign do you have the right to say that he's a munafik yes allah never lied to us whatever allah said is true nothing but the truth if you say whoever lie when he speak he is a sign of munafik whoever promise and he break his promise there's a sign of munafik now if anybody have that sign then you can call him a munafik a believer he have his sign a disbeliever also have their signs alama so now you know that this is a believer you can trust it non believer you know okay we are friend just friend munafik don't trust them don't trust any munafik they will kill you they will destroy you so fellow brothers and sisters islam is here to guide us islam is here to make us followers of knowledge not blind follower islam is here to make us people become muttabi' not muqallid majority of the people today they become blind follower they just follow who their tradition without knowing why they do this but it's not here to free us to be a follower with knowledge ittiba is people who follow with knowledge so knowledge will give us light knowledge will free us from jahiliyyah and knowledge will bring this world to civilization without knowledge we all will become ignorant jahiliyyah and that's why allah said hal yastawi allazina ya'lamun wallazina la ya'lamun is this what allah said to us allah is asking us do you think the people of knowledge and the people who have no knowledge is the same no because of knowledge we know where we stand because of the right knowledge we know who is the true god is because of the right knowledge so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all brothers and sisters and may allah make us understand his deen that islam is not outdated religion but is a religion that bring this world to civilization and a religion that promote peace that unite all the nation and tribes to live together as one big family the best among you is not because of your color your name it because of taqwa it because of your faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your belief and piety towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so may allah strengthen our iman and open our heart so that we will live together like a family and those who are not yet muslim brothers and sisters who are muslim it is your duty to show them how loving 
how caring the Muslim is and how good Islam is and Islam is for them not only for you so we believe that what people always remind us if people say the Muslim they are bad people in a way I don't blame them in a way because sometimes you come across a lot of Muslim who are not good Muslim do you agree with me brother yes, yes. I have the experience I became a Muslim since 1968 almost how many years how many years I'm a Muslim now 42 years four years I suffer the beginning of the four years when I become Muslim because I have a lot of yeah, unpracticing Muslim around me show me all the worst example the worst example but Allah is kind he loves me he protect me and he guide me because I always ask Allah to guide me nobody can guide me better than Allah and Alhamdulillah life start to change so if they say Muslim is bad I will never disagree but if they say Islam is bad I will not agree you must know the difference between Islam and Muslim it's very important and you must know the, the, the difference between Ibadah and Adat what is Ibadah what is tradition don't mix up these two things. because Ibadah belong to Allah Adat belong to us there's a lot of difference there's a difference just to show you there's a difference between man-made law and divine law the Muslim is being commanded by Allah to follow the divine law not to follow man-made law so may Allah guide us brothers and sisters I think I've been informed that it's time for, to move to the second session the Q&A session so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a practicing Muslim and to make us a good Muslim who will bring Islam back to our neighbor our family who are not yet Muslim and for people who are not yet Muslim please don't delay to become a Muslim because death is only at the corner you can die anytime because we do not want you to fail yourself we do not want you to regret in the hereafter you may fail yourself here but make sure that you don't fail in Akhirah so Islam here is here to save our soul for the next life so may Allah guide us and may Allah increase our patience and protect all of us from all the fitan that we are going to expose to. Allahumma inna na'awuzu bika min azabi jahannam wa min azabi al-qabri wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat wa min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Um, well, we start um, to take some questions from the audience, from the brothers. You know the rules? Anyone doesn't know the rules? Okay, fine. No one said no, so it means everyone knows, yeah? Right. So these are the microphones for the brother, microphone for the brother, microphone for the sisters. You come forward, you put your question. Uh, not a lecture, you know, uh, perhaps uh, it's better if it's in English. <laughs> Those I won't be able to understand it, but you can say it in uh, Norwegian as well. And uh, uh, just make sure you keep your questions to the topic. Okay, and, uh, you know, uh, let's fire away. Should we take, um, we'll try to get the sisters to uh, give the first question, if there's a sister up there. Oh, any Adam. brothers over there? The sister is there. The sister is Sisters over there? Yes. yes, waving. Go ahead, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, brother, as you said that uh, human beings have to abide by the divine law. So, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you have to follow my commands and after that you have to follow the sunnah. So people with different thoughts, everyone in the society who live together have different thoughts. But only when they strive towards a single goal, only then they can reach towards a goal. So nowadays people have, uh, many people say that you cannot believe the authenticity of hadith. People have... Uh, um, introduce new uh, fatwas, everything, and uh, some follow the, for example, some follow Raful Yadin and some don't do Raful Yadin. Some say Tarave is not authentic. Uh, so, can you please explain about this uh, difference of opinion and uh, how, how to follow the authentic hadith? What is the procedure? Thank you. Yeah, did you get that? The beginning it's part. Actually, okay. not on the topic, I must say, it's not on the topic really. But if you want to answer it, yeah. But the the, the well, early basically question the is concept of the uh, you know the hadith and the way in which they are interpreted and the, and, and and how they are uh, passed forward into this modern day, I believe, is the the real issue. Yeah. To be a quick one, I try to give an quick answer. Quick one, then. Yeah. Bismillah. Now, firstly, sister, we believe what Allah said, what not what people say. Allah says, Inna nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. Allah is the one who revealed the Quran. He will protect the authenticity of his book, number one. So we have no doubts about the Quran. And Allah says, Fa in tanazaktum fi shayin farudduhu ilallah waras. If you dispute in any matter, in any matter, not only about the ibadah, mu'amalat, munaqah, jinnah, anything, you should refer back to the word of Allah and the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the question from the sister is now we have problem a lot of us, uh, not a lot, some group so-called Muslim is starting to say that we cannot follow the sunnah of the prophet, the hadith because we do not know how authentic the hadith is. Number one, if they have doubts because they are ignorant, it is their problem. They must remember what Allah said. Fas'alu ahli zikr in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask people of knowledge if they know not. Of course, you want to know about which hadith is authentic, then you must refer back to the scholar of hadith. Don't ask just anybody. And the Prophet has said it very clear before he passed away. Man qala alayya ma lam akul nar. Whoever dared to say something that the Prophet didn't say, but he used the name of the Prophet. He lied with the name of the Prophet. That means the Prophet, he is putting himself in hellfire. Now, the Prophet is aware that there will come a time people will use his name to say, this is a sunnah, this is a sunnah, but it's not from the Prophet yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, from time to time, Allah has sent people who will come and protect the saying of the Prophet So, inshallah, if you follow the Quran and the Hadith, I give a simple example. For majority of the Muslim, they don't have the knowledge of Hadith. They can read the Quran, okay? But to be fair to you, just have one set of Sahih Bukhari, another set of Sahih Muslim is sufficient for the public. For normal Muslim, you have the Quran with you, you have the Hadith Bukhari and Hadith Sahih Muslim, it is sufficient for the beginners. But if you want to go further to, read, to learn the, the, the Hadith, the sign of hadith, of course, you need more time. But inshallah, like what Allah promised that He will protect His deen, Allah will protect His deen. And the confusion is because the Muslim today, they have little knowledge about hadith, but they like to talk about hadith. May Allah guide them. Amin ya Rabbil Alam. Zakallah. Okay, next. Amin. Inshallah. Okay, so just remember to keep it on the topic Islam in the modern society, conflict or harmony. Um, we've got a brother down here who wants to ask a question. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope this is relevant to the topic. I okay. Think it's, well, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll let okay. you off, right? Because <laughs> you're not you. yet Muslim. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it is directly relevant in the sense that for not a Muslim, this is a fundamental question sure. for me. Sure. That um, Allah is uh, described as being both uh, or altogether omniscient, omnipotent, and uh, ultimately compassionate. And I think this is not just a question for Islam, but for religion in general, is how do we understand both free will and the suffering of the innocents in the light of this? Yeah. Thank you okay, very much. Fine. Thank you. I think, Sheikh, you got that about free will 
and suffering in the world and Allah being omnipotent. Fellow brothers and sisters, we know that Allah, the Creator, whatever He creates, there is a reason. It's not easy for normal people like you and me to understand. The only thing Allah said, if He decides to do something, He just said, Kun Fayakun, be and it's be. The brother is trying to share with us how about some people is suffering, somebody was born handicapped. And then somebody was born in the palace, become the royal family, and we become a non-royal family. You know, we become poor. So is that fair? Allah know best. Allah know best. Sometimes Allah make this thing happen with a with, with a reason. With a reason. Everything that Allah create, there is a reason. There is a sabab, and only Allah know best. And that's why Allah remind us. The best among you is not whether he's handicapped or not, whether he's rich or poor. He said, the best among you are people who are faithful to me, who are piety to me. Inna akramakum indallahi adqaakum. Now again, when you talk about suffering, now once upon a time I was a Buddhist, yeah, and Buddhism always yeah, reminds us about the truth of suffering. And Allah also said, "Wala nabluwan na kung bisay in minal kauf, walju wa nak sa minal amwari, wal anumfusi, wal thamarat, wal bashiri sabirin." This word suffering, sometimes if I compare with somebody who is worse than me, or somebody who is handicapped, I'm okay. Alhamdulillah, Allah make me perfect. Alhamdulillah, I have all the 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 thing that I need from Allah. But somebody may have no leg. Somebody have no hands. Somebody look differently. But to me, if I compare him and me, I'm better. But to him, it's not a suffering. To him, he's useless. He's born in that manner. There's no suffering for only we pity him for that. It's like when we meet the poor, when we go and visit the poor, we thought that they are poor, so we want to help them. We give them things, but they don't need. They are happy with that lifestyle. They are contented with that kind of lifestyle because we start to compare we and them. By right, insha Allah, insha Allah, everybody where Allah have qadar, if Allah ordained this thing is going to happen, Allah said, "La yukallif Allahu nafsan illa wusaha." Allah will never burden anyone except those who are able to accept it. And may Allah make us understand. Yeah, why all this thing is happening? It's just like if Allah make everybody come become doctor, what is going to happen to us? Everybody become a doctor. Who is going to be a patient? So you heal yourself, you inject yourself, you find your own medicine. You don't have to go to any. If everybody make everybody a fisherman, nobody is going to develop this country. All deal with water, water, water. Allah is great. They are poor, they are rich. The poor need the help from the rich one. And the rich need the help from the poor one. He cannot be rich without the poor. The poor is the one who works for him. You got people who are sick, you got doctor. You got teacher and you got normal people who are ignorant so that the people who have knowledge will teach people who are ignorant. If everybody become a lecturer, what is going to happen? What is going to happen to this world? What is going to happen, brother? There's no balance anymore. Allah, Almighty Allah, when He makes something, He has His own wisdom. Everything that He makes is for the best of all of us. Only we don't understand, inshallah. With patience, Allah said, you will understand. So inshallah, for the believer, they have no problem. For people who don't believe yet, they may have some problem. But when you believe, you solve your problem, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. I hope that answers the question there. And uh, do come back to us if you need some more clarification, or you can come and see us later on. No. Uh, the not yet Muslim brother who answered that question, inshallah. Um, we've got some other questions over here. Um, but there's actually quite a nice one here. It's sort of related to the topic regarding is basically dawa or hijrah. Should we, we, we're undergoing difficulties here. Should we leave or should we stay? 
Should we leave or should we stay should here? Should we leave or stay? Should we make hijrah? Ah. Or should we stay here and fight our corner? Wherever you are, you stay. You don't make another hijrah. Allah wants you to be here. Until you are not given your right to worship Allah. But you are given the right to worship Allah. You are given the right to organize this gathering. That shows that you have no excuse to run away from here. Allah wants you to be here, brother. You cannot run away. When the Prophet ﷺ was appointed by Allah to be his messenger, was the surrounding Islamic? Was the environment Islamic? Is that Islamic? No. Only Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and a Muslim. One man. He did not run away. He did not just say, Oh Allah, it's difficult, man. I'm the only guy. And you want me to talk to all these people who have been worshipping 360 God? But he never ran away. Keep on calling. Call his wife, Khatija. Khatija become Muslim. Call his cousin, Ali. Ali become a Muslim. Call his best friend, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. He never stopped Dawah. Until 23 years after that, whole Mecca, once upon a time was Jahiliya Mushrikin, become Darul Islam. Allah, you don't run away. Islam do not teach the, the believer to run away. No. Until that what the Prophet and Allah said, if you are not given the freedom to practice your religion, then you may have to plan for the hijrah. But once you are given, then there is no excuse for you to make hijrah. The hijrah that you need to do now is from a non-practicing Muslim to a practicing Muslim. That's the first hijrah. Yeah. From always stay away from the mosque, make a hijrah to the mosque. Don't run away from the mosque. Run towards the mosque. Can you do that? Can we do that, brothers? Yes. Yeah, the Just do that. Of course, we are here for a reason. And after you know that Islam is for all mankind, it's your duty to do da'wah. Yeah, it's your duty to do, don't make hijrah anymore. Yeah? When Allah said you are here, there's a reason Allah wants you to be here. May Allah give us good reward, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. And Jazakallah uh, khair, we have a question from the sisters. I believe this is from... Not yet Muslim sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question. Uh, my name is Sumaya, but I have uh, three questions from a non Muslim sister who is. Uh, I pray that she. A not yet Muslim sister. Yeah, yeah. but I pray that she soon. Uh, that Allah soon shows her the way. She's got three questions. She was wondering about a Muslim man, if he can marry. Uh, what kind of woman he can marry? Can he marry only for a, a Muslim, a Jewish, or a Christian, or can he marry uh, anyone <laughs> by, by, with any religion? Uh, and the other question is, uh, what she's, she's asking what um, what Islam says about a lady uh, who's married, who's been married several times and has children with several men. Uh, what is what Islam says about a man, uh, a Muslim man? If she, he, if is it, if it's good to marry a woman like that or not? Yeah, right. I'm trying. <laughs> um, okay. Should we? Should we? Let's just deal with those two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first one. No, the first well, one. Repeat. I mean, the the second one was so confusing. I'm <laughs> to be honest. But the first one, just reiterate the first one. Just mm -hmm. reiterate. Uh, the first one. Can a, can a Muslim man marry? Oh, yeah. Christian, Jew, yeah. No, uh, yeah, anyone clear. else with that? Can a Muslim people. man marry a woman who are from the Ahli Kitab? Yeah, uh, yes. or with, with, with other religions, not only Ahli Kitab. Okay. Yeah. As Muslim, we believe in what Allah said. Allah said the Muslim man can marry with the people of the book. There is the Ahli Kitab, the Yahud and Nasara. You can marry with them, and they don't have to be a Muslim. 
according to the Quran. To the extent that the food prepared by the Ahli Kitab also is halal for the believers. And that's what Allah said. But only to the Ahli Kitab. For people who are not under the category of Ahli Kitab, the Muslim man cannot marry with them. Because Islamic marriage is not just a husband and wife uh, thing, but is an institution. Yeah, it's a family institution. We want to bring a, 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 a healthy uh, family. We want to develop a harmony and loving family. To have a good family, you must make sure that both parties believe yeah, in the same God. Now, the people of the book are the people who believe in the same God. Because they have kitab with them. Torah, they have prophet with them, Moses. They have kitab with them, Injil. And they have Jesus with them. And all of them mm. are inviting their people to believe in the same God. And that's why we are allowed to get married with each other. Yes, you are allowed. As long as they are people of the book, but if they are not the people of the book, then the man, Muslim man, cannot marry with the lady until she decides to be a Muslim. To make sure that the family will have harmony and peace. Now, second one. I think the second one is about a woman who has been married many times and has children. Can a Muslim man marry her? Correct? That was what I understood. Is that correct, sister? Is that Can correct? Can you just... Yes? Yes. Someone said yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the third question. No, no, the second no, one. Second, the second, one. second sorry. Yeah. The, she was wondering about what, Isla what, what Islam advises a man to, uh, to choose when it comes to a woman who has several children okay. with yeah. different pa parents, no. with different fathers. No. The Prophet ﷺ is the best example. He married a lot of widows. And also woman who was married before. The first wife of the prophet, Khatija, yeah, she was a widow. Not, not only a widow, she was married before. She got children and there's no problem. There's no problem to the extent that at that time the prophet was only 25 years old and Khatija was 40, 40 years. Even Khatija is older than prophet Muhammad, no problem. Can you imagine sister? So there's no problem for a sister who is married and then she was divorced because you know, Allah made things happen. And um, then now another man wants to remarry with her, it's good. According to the Islamic teaching, the Muslim is being also recommended highly by the Prophet to marry yeah, a divorcee or a widow. To take care of the children. Because they are, if they are widows, that means the children are yatim. So it's very important for you to take care of the orphans so that the orphans feel that they still have a father figure. So Islamically, it is uh, highly recommended through the practice of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Now this is different between the Jahiliya system. The Jahiliya system, if a woman uh, become a widow or if she's been divorced by the husband, no man will want to marry her anymore. The community consider this woman useless. But Islam, no. Islam protect the right and the honor of this woman. That she is just like another woman. She have the right. She have the right to be honored. And the right to be remarried again. Yeah, it's allowed. Jazakallah khair. There's also just a little clarification on the first. With somebody else. I think this is actually a big problem okay. in Norway. From my understanding with discussions with some brothers and sisters, this uh, issue of marrying the people of the, both the Jews and, and, and the Christians. Uh, does the term Ahli Kitab in modern day Norway, how do, how do we um, um, clarify exactly what is Ahli Kitab and is, is it now the same as it was during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Fellow brother and sister, when you talk about Ahlul Kitab, there are different opinions about this. One group of scholars said Ahlul Kitab only apply to the children of Israel. Because we all believe that Moses was sent 
to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. They are not prophet to other race, to other nation, except to their own people. Now, even Jesus have said that I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, these are prophet to a calm, to their own calm. Not a prophet to every nation. How about the people of the book, like in China, back home, in China, you have a lot of Chinese who are Christian today. Do they consider themselves people of the book? Yes, they consider themselves as people of the book because they believe in Jesus, they believe in the Bible. But do you think Jesus will acknowledge them in the hereafter? What do you think, brother? Jesus cannot accept them because he was not sent for the Chinese. He will be surprised. When do you become my ummah? No, he'll be surprised. You can claim anything you like. But Jesus was not sent for the Chinese. How can the Chinese become a Christian? But there are a lot of Chinese who are Christian today. If you go to India, you have a lot of Indian Christian too. Do you think Jesus will come and say, Oh, my Ummah, come here, come here. Oh, you Indian. No. He will not recognize them because he was not sent for them. That's why in the time of Jesus, you don't see any followers of Jesus who are non-Israel. Only the Bani Israel. So they say that people of the book only refer to the Bani Israel. Of course, there's another group of scholars here, as long as they are people of the book. But it's against our belief again. Because we know that a prophet was sent to a particular nation and Prophet Muhammad was sent to all mankind. Ya ayyuna, ya ayyuhannas, kul ya ayyuhannas, inni rasulullah ilaykum jami'a. Allah said, O Muhammad, tell the people that you are the messenger of Allah to all of them. But other than Prophet Muhammad, all the Prophet never said that they were sent to everybody. No. They are sent to their own people. Illa qawmihi. When Moses will always say to his kaum, to his people. So if you ask me about this, I will say, it. I'm in the opinion to say that the people of the book only apply to the Bani Israel. Allahu A'lam Islam. Zakamak. I hope that um, answers that question, and we've got lots of other questions. Should we have that third part of the question from the sister first, the sister over there? In the meantime, just a quick one. It's about earrings. And earrings. Bracelets. Earrings. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there's one question about can men wear earrings and mm. gold, and can sisters wear earrings oh, yeah. and bracelets and adornments and that sort of thing. So I think that. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Day. All this zina. Decoration is allowed majority for the woman because Allah made the woman with their nature. You can uh, you know, decorate yourself you know, in a manner that Allah allowed you. But for the men, Alhamdulillah, I see a lot of men in front of me. They don't have earring with them because they are men. They are real men. So, <laughs> so if there's a man who hear one earring, that is half man. <laughs> so the man should behave like a man. You know? And the Prophet did say that Allah will curse the man who want to be like a woman. The same thing goes to the woman who like to behave like a man, dress like a man. No, you're not supposed to do that. This earring belong to them, to our sisters, not to you. you know? So if you want to poke anything, you poke other side. Don't poke here. You know? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very important. I, I really don't understand what's happening to the men today. No, I really don't understand. Sometimes they do things, even the Jahiliya don't do it. Even the pagan don't do it. No? Now, Shaitan also got shocked. No, the Shaitan also was, suddenly they see what's happening to these people. 
you know. You, we know who is Shaitan, you know. But Shaitan don't do this thing, you know. Shaitan, they are very handsome men, you know. <laughs> so may Allah guide us, brother. Please stay away from things that is not fit for us. Yeah? You know why the Prophet said, woman, you, are, you can wear gold, you can dress silk, dress why? Because silk is very fine. It's very soft material. The man know, the Prophet said, don't wear silk unless you have certain kind of skin disease that you are allergic with any other material except silk then you, you can you know when you wear something that is very soft and you walk also very soft like the silk no it confuses a lot of people behind you no it confuses the people is this a he or she it's not good no brother and sister i have experience with that <coughs> You know, when I was in the office before, there a group of kunsa, yeah, a group of kunsa. They are male, but they just want to be like female. So they came to see us to have a dialogue. You know what is a dialogue about? A majority are Muslim, but when they enter my office, everyone was looking. They look so beautiful. More beautiful than the lady. <laughs> you make everybody confused again. Are they really the kunsa or, or they are real lady? But when they start to talk, then you know, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what they ask me? They say, Sheikh, we just want some advice from you. I say, please. We want to know that when we pray, when we want to pray in the mosque, which staff should we join? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, they still pray to Allah. They are better than the zakar who don't pray to Allah. Yeah, they are better than the men. So I look at them and say, have you any, experience, any bad experience in the mosque? Yeah, because sometimes when we went to join the men's side, the men chase us away. He said, don't get close to me. With my wudu will get invalid. So when they went to the, the, to the group belonged to the Muslim, huh? the woman was scream. He said, the man is with us. I said, for your situation, you better pray at home. <laughs> Don't create confusion to anybody. You know? Pray at home. Since you claim yourself as a Muslim, may Allah guide you. We hope one day you become either a man or a woman. <laughs> Don't become between. Yeah? And then you know in my country, you have area that after 12 midnight, you see these people coming up. Their business starts at 12 midnight. And sometimes, you have these police will go there and rape them, arrest them. But you know, these people, they love policemen. <laughs> if this group of police has been sent to arrest these people, after that, they will take a ghusul. You know, they take a ghusul. They take a bath. They say, how can we arrest this kind of people? Because these people love to be arrested. They are not going to run from the police. When the police come and grab them, oh, my brother, my darling, you see. The police will push them away. You know, it's not easy to deal with this, this kind of people. So anyhow, yes, yeah, be a man or be a woman. And we have cases, people who came, once, according to the IC, according to their birth certificate, is a she. But now she wants to become a he because she's in love with a she. <laughs> and then he came to the office and said, I want to marry she and she. How can you get married, she and she? <laughs> but I'm a he. What is your proof? Your name said you are a she. But you have another group of people you call al kuntha muskil. That means people who are born with two organs. And then they got to refer back to the specialist and the doctor will analyze the whole situation and they will finalize yeah, what is going to happen to this. 
whether it's a he or she, and they go through an operation. One, they gone through the operation after they check the hormone and everything, then they will decide now, if once upon a time is she, now he become he. And then one he decide is he, we accept he as a he. Then they got to have a proof that the doctor, the specialist have confirmed that now she is a he now. Then we'll accept a he. Because we only accept he or she. We cannot accept he, she. <laughs> yeah? May Allah bless us now. I mean, yeah. we have a last one. We well, have I mean, something. we've got we've more. got a lot of um, questions. Uh, Subhanallah, they're all, most of them are off the topic, but they're sort of on the topic as well. Alhamdulillah. Um, next question is, I think it's going to be the last one. Um, many and, uh, yet to be Muslims, and people that maybe uh, get very f upset about a particular issue, which is the the marriage between the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Aisha radiallahu anhu you know narrating that of course that the uh, marriage would have been consummated at a very young age mm -hmm. so I think maybe uh, that would be good for non-Muslims to or not yes Muslims sorry to understand the background to that Fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, and for people who are not yet Muslim, it's very sad. A lot of people have made a comment about uh, the marriage of Prophet Muhammad to Aisha very negatively because they don't understand the whole issues. If you look back to the history of the marriage between Prophet Muhammad and Aisha, radiallahu anha, Allahu Akbar, it's a very unique relationship, and there is nothing to do about sex here. Normally, when people talk about this relation, they talk about sex. How can a man like this, like a father figure to Aisha, get married with Aisha? The relationship between the Prophet and Aisha, Prophet with Abu Bakr, is very, very unique. And there's no sex involved yet in the early age, brothers and sisters. But to be very frank to all of us, as husband and wife, do we have complaints towards our husband and sister? Do you have any complaint about your husband? Be, be, be honest to me. Do you have any complaint with your husband? Yes. At least sometimes said, I have been warning you, I have been reminding you. But you never change. You are always the same person. Among us, husband and wife, there is always uh, some complaint. Either you say it aloud or in silence. There's always some complaint. Either you tell him directly or you talk to your family, you talk to your best friend. Uh, or all the husband is alike. You know something? Do you know that your husband is going somewhere? No. You thought that you are the only person who have some problem in, in communication, the communication with your husband. No, every wife seems to have the same problem. My husband also the same. <laughs> but you never find in the history of Aisha she made any complaint about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Never. It's a great enigma. People don't understand. People who are who are trying to create, uh, I mean, this fitan is because they are jealous about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even he's an elderly man, he married with this young girl. But most of the wives of the Prophet, they are widows. Only Aisha radiallahu anha. And never in the time of the Prophet when he was alive, or after the Prophet depart, wafat, Aisha make any complaint, negative complaint towards her husband. Whatever she said, everything is good. To show us that there is no, I, I would say that there's nothing uh, against her nature. She accepts the Prophet. You know, when the time when she got married, she didn't stay with the Prophet. She still stayed with the family, her own family. And just after marriage, she go and play with the friend. And to show us that the Prophet never uh, do anything 
yeah, that is not right as a man. Until when she is prepared, yeah, then only the prophet have a relationship with her. And that's also with her consent. It's not by force. Now that relationship is a very unique relationship. Yeah? Only Allah and the believer understand. For those who don't understand, they will create a fitan to the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah protect the Prophet, protect Amen. us. Amen. And may Allah make the people who want to know the truth to be fair and honest to the teaching of Islam and not to be biased and be unjust to the Ummah. Yeah? And may Allah guide us all. وبالله التوفيق ورأقل دعوانا والحمد لله بالعالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته